This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right. Um, in the previous lecture, I, I talked through uh, the free cash flow to firm method uh, of valuing companies. Um, and the free cash flow was calculated in exactly the same way as we do in project appraisal. If the cash flow is available for all providers of finance, we discount it at a relevant cost of capital. And I went through the um, different situations. But if we're using free cash flow to the firm, which is what we were doing, we discount at the relevant cost of capital and it gives us the total value of the firm. Equity plus debt. And you saw in the earlier one, if I wanted to know what the equity is, we'd then have to subtract the value of the debt. Well, the alternative, and again, don't panic, to be clear from the question, which one would be expected, the alternative, which I'm not going to explain, is something called the free cash flow to equity. And why is that going to be different? Free cash flow to firm was all the money available to satisfy both the debt and the equity. Free cash flows to equity, that's the amount available just for the equity. And so it's effectively the free cash flows again, but after subtracting interest. Oh. You must be sick of my writing, but still. And I'll show you precisely how we get it in a minute, but we simply subtract the interest. So you get your cash flows in exactly the normal way. But if you want the free cash flow just to the equity, then we need to subtract whatever interest is paid to the debt lenders. Uh, when we come to discount, we're only looking at flows to the equity, to the shareholders, and therefore we discount at the cost of equity and what we end up with is directly the market value of the equity. So that really should make sense of it on its own. Free cash flows to the firm, we ignore interest, we want the total for all providers of finance. Free cash flow to equity, we subtract interest to be left with the cash available for shareholders. The discounting, free cash flows to the firm, discount at the relevant overall cost of capital, and it gives us the total value of the firm. Free cash flows to equity, discount at the cost of equity, and it gives us the value of the equity. As simple as that. As to how you get the cash flows to equity, uh, again, it could be two ways. You could either be given all the relevant cash flows, revenue, costs, etc., and subtract interest. Or, again, you could be given, um, more likely for this one, given um, effectively extended profit or loss, and be expected to get it that way. Uh, I've given a pro forma. I hardly need if you've understood me. But to make sense of it, uh, look at uh, the next example, which says, using the information example 2, so you'll have to look back in the notes, calculate the free cash flow to equity. And what are we given? We start with the operating profit, earnings before interest and tax, 7.20. Uh, we subtract whatever tax is being paid. Obviously, that's not available to anybody. 336. 
Uh, we have bank depreciation. It's not a cash flow. What was it? 288. And so far, what have we got? 720 minus 336 plus 288. 672. What else? Well, just like I said before, um, your examiner always assumes, but it is an assumption, unless specifically told, that we need to spend an amount replacing non-current assets, an amount equal to the depreciation charge. So replacement of non-current assets, 288. But I said enough earlier about that being an assumption unless you're specifically told to do it. Any other cash? Uh, well, there's the cost of new non-current assets. The question told us it was 36. Anything else? Well, for the same reasons as before, uh, there's an increase in working capital. Um, ah, I've lost it. 120. And so far, it's identical to what we did earlier. So you don't need to, but if I do do a subtotal here, 672 minus 288 minus 36 minus 120, this is what we got before, the free cash flow. And some of that was going to debt, some of that was going to equity. However, if we want the free cash flow to equity, clearly not all 2 to 8 is available uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is some of that money will go in debt interest. So back to the question, interest, 12. It wasn't relevant before, but it certainly is now. And the other thing that would affect is, uh, still with regard to debt, um, if we spent money repaying any debt, any loans, or if we were to raise money by taking any loans. Well, here, there are loans repaid. of 48. Uh, there's no money raised, but so there we are. So the free cash flow to equity uh, 228 minus 12 minus 48 168 and again you would then need to start discounting uh, you'd either have to do that for several years or more likely you'd be doing it for one year but told it was then going to grow at 5% a year or something. You discount to get a market value but the discounting would be at the cost of equity. Whatever the cost of equity is for the level of risk in the company, again you may have to use betas but you know, I can't keep repeating what we've done earlier. So, um, there we are, effectively, certainly as far as the numbers are concerned. And I'm very conscious, and I said this at the beginning of the first lecture, that each one on their own is relatively small. I just wanted to remind you of the technique and say which technique is relevant when. And I hope that's made sense. But I am very conscious that a full exam question Although the technique itself is no harder. There's a lot more to read and a lot more to do and a lot more to get lost in. Which is why can I repeat what I said before? Um, and what did I say before? What I said before that do please, when you're, you're happy with what's in this lecture, you know, and if you need, go back through it and check those examples again. But once you feel you are confident, do, do practice 
practice questions from your revision kit, exam kit. Get used to the style, make silly mistakes and learn from them. But watch my uh, lectures. Okay, there aren't that many, but the revision kit lectures is what it's headed up. Whereas I've said, I don't just go through the arithmetic, I do talk about the approach, you know, how to sort out the question. Uh, you will find on the next two pages a bit to write. Well, I've lectured enough on this, I really have. So I think I've typed the next two pages well enough to have a read. But the important bit, as far as arithmetic is concerned, is what we've done here.